Warrior Poets, welcome back. This is episode two about building fighter mindset. Uh, before I talk about some of the general stuff, today I wanted to talk about more of the fury aspect. Uh, rage, fury, can be very helpful on a battlefield and uh, I dare say even necessary in some instances. Uh, the difficulty with uh, conjuring up rage or fury is just that. It's hard to actually materialize. The fear-conquering nature of aggression, of rage, of anger is really, really helpful. The trick is, is to be angry, furious, but still be able to think clearly. So now the way it works is you really just got three options. One, uh, in conjuring up rage, circumstances make you angry. And if circumstances make you angry, you can't really get rage or anger on demand, you're at the mercy of circumstances. Someone else makes you mad, which means you're not in control of it. Someone else is. And because of that, you're probably not going to be calm, clear thinking. You aren't not handling your rage. Your rage is handling you. The second thing is to actually become an angry person, uh, uh, which obviously you can think of some of the difficulties with that. Uh, you may be useful in a firefight, but for the rest of your life, you're going to be in terrible, terrible trouble. No one's going to hang, hang out with you, and you probably belong in prison uh, if you're angry enough, often enough. You're going to make bad decisions. And I don't want to train that type of person. That's the person that snaps and does bad things. I don't really like that. The third option is to develop somewhat of an inner rage switch. Like you flip on a light switch, and you can go from calm, cool, hanging out, to fury uh, in a moment. And so you develop an internal switch. So I have within me an inner rage monster. Uh, I think it was Paul Howe that talked about everyone has to have an inner beast that they keep caged or, or, or something to that effect. And I have an inner rage monster. Mine just likes to listen to Beethoven. Uh, meaning when I flip that fury button, I want to still be able to think clearly and calmly so that I can remain a tactician and see above uh, the, the, uh, um, the rage. Uh, I don't want to just charge full speed into the, the torpedoes when flanking is the best thing to do. How can I manage intellect and rage at the same time? And if you can do that, you become a very, very dangerous animal. And that's the goal is to become very, very good protectors, impervious to the negative effects of fear and being able to capitalize on fear coupled with rage. Now, here's a couple little things that you can do. One, if you find something in life that scares you, run at it. If you're really afraid of heights, guess what you need to go do? Go play with heights. Uh, go until it doesn't have any power over you. You're claustrophobic, you're going splunking. <laughs> go, you no longer take the stairs. You're an elevator person now. Uh, you know, uh, martial arts can also be a real good thing, especially something that's not self-defense. You want something that's offensive. You, you want to take the fight to them. Things like Muay Thai, Krav Maga, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, these are types of martial arts that can be really, really good and very, very instrumental in developing rage switches. Another practical way to conjure up rage is to have mental pictures. And these are kind of like mental models that we'll make. Uh, dwelling on the consequences of failure so that it's already pre-programmed pre fury. So somebody is trying to, uh, you know, kill you or your family or something. And you've already rehearsed that scenario. And then in your rehearsing of the scenario, it's not action versus just reaction. Instead, it's imagine you failed. Imagine they were raped and killed. Imagine that you were tied up and you watched this whole process happen while you chose which kid would die. And you were powerless to stop them because you failed them. And that this fam, and, and stuff like that may seem like really, really terrible stuff, but if you're intimately familiar with the cost of failure and the reality of what some people would do to you and your family, uh, there are ISIS folks that if they were uh, able to gain access to your house, they would slow torture you and your family without any explanation. There are sociopaths, psychopaths, that would take great pleasure in watching the slow torture of you and your family. Consider the cost of failure. Uh, become in incensed at the idea of it. So that when something in real life mirrors the reality of that uh, maybe about to play out, you are already pre-programmed to hit a furious point. Warrior Poets, hope this was helpful. 
Uh, we love people. We don't love violence. We don't love war. But we are ready to become dangerous instruments of war in the protection of those we love. Train hard, but train smart, guys. See you next time on episode three.